Hi everyone, welcome back to Being Your Knowledge and today we're going to be talking about renal tubular transfer proteins. I will uh, tell you a promise that if we can trust in this promise will be very helpful for those that I want to accept it. Well, but yeah, personally I think that all of us, we need this and yes because God is good. Psalm 11 says that may the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. You know, human beings always want to have strength and peace. And both of those and more, we can find it in God which is love well let's just talk about renal tubular transport proteins and before we continue I would like just to mention three important um, uh, three processes of reabsorption or secretion with different substance so we're going to start with the first one and if you have so I'm going to draw this here okay so we're going to have this one here okay and this one uh -huh. now we're going to have this Okay, the first one that we're going to be talking is uh, inulin and manitol. Okay, manitol with two N. Yeah, I should have two Ns here. Okay, let me write it better. There we go. Now this one go. What what what's going here? So that is not tubular reabsorption or secretion when you give to the patient inulin or magnetol. So that is no tubular reabsorption reabsorption or secretion. So that means that the filter amount and the excreted amount is the same. So filter and amount, so both are going to be amount. I'm going to put it here on the top that we can have more room. Filter amount is equal to the excreted amount. It's equal because just go straight ahead and you filter the thing that you filter, you excrete it, okay? So and this is when the patient has inulin or manitol. So graphically, so basically, you give this to the patient and then come across here and just right away, go out, the same. Now, but what about if I give to the patient, so this is the first one, I'm going to try to split it here, okay? So you're going to be seeing three, okay, so probably you can have room. So let's just do the second one here. Okay, so that was the first one. Now we're going to do the second one here. Oops, sorry, this shouldn't pass that one. The second one. Yeah, so the second one, it is uh, when you give to the patient. There we go. So if you give to the patient glucose, sodium, uh, and urea. So let's just see what happens. So the same, we have the same structure here, but we're going to draw a little bit smaller. Okay. And then yes, we have the same here. Okay. So what what's going on here? So basically that is going to be a net. So it's going to be a net tubular reabsorption. So 
netibular so that's mean that they can reabsorb reabsorption so netibular reabsorption of the glucose or the sodium or the urea so but probably you're asking about excretion how it is so excreted amount the excreted amount um, is less is less than the filter amount so that means that you filter more than you excrete okay yes how this is going to look like in the graph so basically you have here enter okay and now one is going to cross and then the other is going to go away so you filter and you excrete but you excrete less than you filter when you give to the patient glucose sodium urea now one more with this one so let's just split it here that we can have room and just copy this picture let's see if that works yep let's copy we'll paste it here yeah so we have this picture here the same but yeah so so what's going on now now we are going to see which one is the one that is going to be here so it is um here we go yeah so now it is pah a paraminoperic acid and or oh, and the other one is creatinine okay so which is p a this is a p p a h and there is creatinine okay the net tubular secretion let's just talk about in this one what's going on so in the net tubular secretion of this one now you excrete more than you filter okay so that means that you excreted amount you excreted amount it's more 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 than the filter amount so but how this one looks like in the graph so let's just we we'll write it here okay okay so how this looks like in the graph so basically you have your graph here and then you have this one here so if you have excrete amount is more than the filter amount so that's mean that the one just come here we pause there okay now this one is going to be more thick because you have more excretion okay so you have more excretion you have more excretion you have more excretion than filter amount and then the filter amount just come here just a little bit okay yeah so basically it looks like that okay good yeah well now glucose let's just talk about some key points here okay but before those key points let's just review it inulin and minotol which is here in the point number one. So remember that is not tubular reabsorption or secretion. So since that is not tubular or or absorption, I mean that is not tubular. Um, that is the filter. That is not tubular reabsorption or resecretion. So that's mean that the filter amount is equal to the excreted amount. That's it for this one. Go straight. Now here in the graph number two, we have glucose that we eat in different things sodium but we really need it because is the sodium is one of the electrolytes that is going to depolarize basically almost all the cells of your body except your xenoatria and your thalamus and urea well that we excreted now all those three glucose sodium and urea 
they don't have net tubular I mean the net tubular reabsorption so the excreted amount is going to be less than the filter amount so but then the last one para aminobiric acid and creatinine which is the number three this one so you have more excreted amount than the filter amount got it now let's just talk about a little bit about glucose glucose normally or is normally freely filtered okay uh, at the glomerulose and completely partial reabsorption in the proximal tubule depending on the upon the filter glucose load nah, this is this is this is super good now glomerulose let's just talk here a little bit about the glomerulose so basically you have your efferent arterial and then you have your efferent arterial so the afferent is when you are coming in and your efferent is when your ee for exit when you are leaving okay and then the glomerulus is going to be here got it yeah so but this is the glomerulus yeah so but this glucose freely filters at the glomerulus and completely or partially we absorb in the proximal tube because inside of this glomerulus we have a complex of the of the proximal tubule then the the descending loop of handlet then the ascending loop of handlet then collecting all those things okay now but glucose basically is going to be reabsorbed in the proximal tubule but it depends upon the felted glucose load so how much glucose you have now it is important because the key number here if your glucose is less than 126 let me just do it in blue so 126 or less is okay also we use this classification to classify the patient is pre-diabetic or, di or diabetic now one time hit the load of 126 or more so you excrete that glucose in the urine and it's not good because glucose is corrosive and if glucose is corrosive start to damage your kidney and then the patient can get kidney failure renal failure all those things now because glucose is freely filtered in concentration of tubular fluid Bowman space what's all those here is equal to its plasma concentration now in the proximal convoluted tubule reabsorption of glucose occurs via the what as we mentioned here sodium glucose <clears throat> co-transporter in the apical membranes of the tubular cells so these will be important so let's just write it here so <clears throat> this reabsorption the proximal tubule reabsorption um the proximal convoluted sorry So the proximal convoluted uh, tubule reabsorption of which one of glucose occurs how this happened so occurs via via which one sodium glucose co-transport okay good transporters now where where does happen in the apical cells i mean apical membrane of the tubular cells <coughs> excuse me other cells now because this process can be mediated and it is saturable in the setting of high glucose concentrations mentioned here that can be saturated and if saturated so it's going to affect that and uh, this many occur in patients that could happen and it's happening a lot in patients that have an uncontrolled diabetes mellitus and as we mentioned before one time you hit that number 126 or more so you're going to have glucose in the urine glucose is corrosive and then we put a name glycosuria got it 
Yes. Now, the renal tubules do not secrete glucose. Okay. So, the renal tubules do not secrete glucose. It is important that we keep those uh, glucose levels and the normal range. Now, let's just continue. An agent that inhibits the proximal tubule reabsorption will also will cause or filter the glucose to be excreted. Okay? So, what does that mean? Why are you saying there? So, if you have an agent, any agent, I don't know, anything, but this agent that you uh, give to the patient or the patient is taken by himself or herself, if this agent inhibits the proximal, inhibits the proximal tubule, so what's going to happen? Glucose reabsorption, <clears throat> So the glucose reabsorption will cause filtered glucose to be excreted. Oh, so glucose reabsorption, look at this. What's going to happen? Will cause <clears throat> all filtered glucose to be excreted. Now, hmm. Do we want that all the glucose is that instead of being filtered be excreted? Well, if we already mentioned that then if you hit 20, 126 or more, you start to become corrosive to your kidney, all those things. So imagine if we give a certain agent which is going to block um, the proximal tubule so glucose reabsorption and then will cause all the filtered glucose to be excreted so and this happens so it's that that can affect the patients but the, now what then so does the glucose clearings will equal the glomerular filtration rate okay now inuline is also freely filtered at the glomerulus okay so let's just come back here Do you remember when we start to draw this here, all those things that we mentioned that when it is equally filled and excreted was inoline? Yeah. So now, we come back to this slide. Inoline is also, as we mentioned, freely filtered. So that means that yeah. So if filter is a filter, so that's mean I was we mentioned here, sorry. It's going to go straight ahead to excrete it, okay? Because equally filter and excrete it. But yeah, this inulin is neither reabsorbed nor secreted. So no reabsorb no secreted by the renal tubules that we mentioned before for this reason the annulin clearance is commonly used to calculate your glomerular filtration rate so if we want to calculate your glomerular filtration rate we can use annulin because basically it's not reabsorbed it's not secreted and it's filtered freely filtered to be excreted okay with that we are done and thank you so much for watching and remember we can do all things to Christ for strengthen on and don't forget that peace and strength just come from God okay God bless you